Yes, it smells like teen spirit from Nirvana's 1991 Nevermind album with Chris Novoselic killing it on the bass. A lot of beginner bassists try to play this song, which is awesome, but there are a bunch of mistakes that people commonly make. So in this video, I'm going to walk you from level one, noob level, to level five, Novoselic beast level. And I'll also teach you how to steal some of Chris's tricks to juice up your own bass lines. In this video, we're just going to focus on the main intro slash chorus riff. If you want to learn the full song, how Chris played it, I made you a full song tab with sheet music. The link is in the description. So level one, the noob level, is the bare minimum you need to play this with your friends in a garage. So we're playing the right root notes, but with a super simplified version of the plucking rhythm. And in level three, we're going to learn the real rhythm, which many people surprisingly play wrong. Joining us for the noob level is our special guest, Noob Josh. Hi, hi everybody, it's an honor to be here. All right, buddy, so just play the first fret notes with your index finger, index, index, and then you can play the fourth fret notes with your pinky finger. Take it away, Noob Josh, I'll count us in. One, two, one, two, three, go. Great work, Noob Josh. Now go practice and maybe someday you'll be intermediate, Josh. Yes! So your level one takeaway is that if you're a super beginner and you're trying to learn a song that's maybe a little above your level, just try to listen for the most important notes and rhythms, which is what I tried to do to create this Noob level. And to do that, you can use what I call the caveman method. Just imagine yourself to be a caveman or cavewoman. You're listening to this song, and what's it going to sound like to your dumb cave brain? For this song, I thought maybe And that's what gives you your noob level line. In level two, we're still playing the noob rhythm, but we're adding the spicy little slides Chris plays, which sound like this. These add some complexity to the sound of the bass line, and it also kind of matches the way Kurt Cobain sloppily hits open strings in between chords. Adding the slides is gonna change the fretting fingering a bit, so we're gonna, still gonna start on the index finger for the first fret notes, and then hold that index down as you slide up and grab the fourth fret of the E string with your middle finger, and don't release that slide finger until you pluck the next note and then play the fourth fret of the A string with the middle finger, slide it down, go back to the index on the first fret. So index, slide, middle, middle, slide. Let's try this together at level two. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Level two takeaway is that you can make a simple rock bass line a lot more interesting just by adding some little slides in between your root notes. So you could take something like this and make it a little spicier like this. You can never really have too many bass slides. That's why I put a riff with a big epic bass slide right in the first module of my Beginner to Badass course, which you can check out over at BassBuzz.com. We'll get to the biggest slide in this line in level five, but first let's nail the real rhythm. In level three, we're gonna upgrade the rhythm to the way Chris actually plays it. And this is the first level where you can really take this out of the garage and go play it in front of people. But a lot of people play this rhythm wrong by copying the guitar part kind of like this. But Chris actually plays this contrasting rhythm that glues the guitar and drums together. Check this out. Here are the rhythms played by the guitar, bass, and drums. You can see they all line up on those first two beats for the da na na. Then the guitar does the scratchy chicka chickas alone, and the bass follows the kick and snare for the 16th notes on beat three. Three and a four. 
This helps glue the rhythm section together and create some contrast to the guitar part. Real quick, here's a breakdown of how to count this rhythm if you're not super comfortable with 16th notes. So we count the 16ths in a bar, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So this rhythm goes one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So beats one and three are your tricky spots with the 16th notes. Beats two and four are just easy quarter notes. That rhythm gets you almost through the whole intro, but on the way into the verse where the drums go ga 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 ga, we play our own version of that fill ga 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 ga. But if you miss that and just keep playing the main riff until the verse, it's no biggie. Let's play this thing at level three. Here we go. One, two, one, two. Level three takeaway, a good bass line might follow the guitar rhythm, it might follow the drum rhythm, it might even be kind of a fusion of the two, which is what we have in this bass line. So you can experiment with all those options. And remember, if you're having fun learning this song, there's a full song tab and sheet music link in the description. Hey Chris, have you seen that Bass Buzz channel on YouTube? Sure have, Dave. I liked and subscribed and hit the bell. It rocks, eh? In level four, we're gonna get closer to the right tone for this track by using a pick. <gasps> Some people might find this controversial, but it's just what Chris did to get that aggressive trebly tone. I mean, check out how gnarly it is in isolation. So check out the difference. I'll play this with fingers and then with a pick. The brighter tone of the pick helps the bass cut through the mix and give the song a more aggressive vibe. Once you add the pick, you can go to secret level four and a half with the sneaky ghost note. So a ghost note marked by that X is just where you pluck or pick with the strings muted like this, which Chris does right on beat three in this bass line. And that actually makes the picking a little easier because it usually feels better to pick down strokes on the beat and save the up strokes for off the beat. So the ghost gives you a downstroke on beat three, which lets you grab the off beat notes on the upstroke, and then lands you on a downstroke on beat four. So the full picking pattern marked with down and up arrows is down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. So let's try level four with the band, pick in hand, or if not, just try adding that ghost note in with your fingers. Here we go, one, two, one, two, your level four takeaway is there's nothing wrong with using a pick. It just changes your tone a lot, which is really great for some things like Nirvana songs and not great for other things. Like don't take this tone to your next soul gig. <laughs> Okay, don't do that, but should you use a pick to copy the Nirvana bass tone? Hell yeah. Finally, level five, where we'll get as close to Chris's playing as possible, minus the cool dance moves. First, let's tackle this big slide in the intro. So just start with your index finger on the first fret, and you're gonna keep pressing, slide it up to the sixth fret, and then back down to the first fret. People playing covers usually start this slide on the and of three, like this. One, two, three, and four. That sounds fine, but the timing on the studio bass track is actually a little weirder than that. The slide starts late, which sounds more like dividing that beat in three into a triplet and starting on the last chunk. Just listen to the original bass and drums. One, two, three. So was this intentional or just sloppy? Well, he didn't play it exactly like this live. You can hear the slides coming a little earlier.
but it definitely has an effect on the song, at least in the studio version. It's quirkier and a little less rhythmically predictable. This was definitely recorded in a time before everyone was perfectly lining up every single rhythm on the grid in Pro Tools, and that overall sloppy vibe is part of what makes it Nirvana. Now that we've got the monster slide, there's just one more little quirk to complete level 5. We've learned this rhythm correctly the way Chris plays it, but there's one little weird thing he does. Let's check it out on the beat ruler. So on beat 3, when he hits those 4 16th notes that start with the ghost, 3 E and uh, he plays them slightly unevenly, so the offbeat 16th notes actually come late, like this. Take a listen to just the bass and drum tracks there. Listen on beat three. One, two, three. Here's what that would sound like if you play those sixteenths exactly evenly. Here's uneven. Here's even. Uneven. Those uneven 16th notes aren't matched by the guitar or the drums, so it's kind of hard to say whether Chris made an intentional choice to create some rhythmic instability there, or if it was just sloppy alternating picking technique, which I can certainly relate to. So should you copy this uneven rhythm for your band's cover? It's kind of up to you, but if you're trying to replicate the studio bass track perfectly, it's definitely part of the picture, and I think it's kind of cool. It's sort of like the musical equivalent of the ripped jeans and the greasy hair and the oversized flannel that makes it all grunge. Let's play this thing one last time. You can play those grungy, uneven 16th notes if you want to, but definitely get that big slide in there. Let's hit it. Level five. One, two, three. 